Hello. Uh, yesterday I got a box of rocks in the mail from Taylor, who has the YouTube channel called Agate Dad. Uh, he's up in Minnesota and looks for rocks on the beach, uh, kind of like I do, except he looks for Lake Superior agates, where I'm usually looking for Petoskey stones or pudding stones. Uh, so if you like my channel, you might want to go check his out. Anyhow, he's just getting started in lapidary stuff. So I sent him a message uh, a while back and I offered to cut some rocks for him and polish some rocks for him. And so he sent me uh, this pile of rocks, uh, really nicely organized in a box. And he wants me to do, uh, mainly cut them in half and polish some of them. So I'm going to show you uh, one rock at a time and then I'll, uh, I'll kind of cut away from this video and come back and show you what I've done with them. So the first rock he thinks might be a septarian. Uh, and uh, I'm going to cut it, he made a nice little line for me, I'm going to cut it right in half like that. And uh, maybe polish it up inside, depends on what it looks like. So that's rock number one. So this one got uh, polished on the flat lap, uh, or at least flattened out on the flat lap, and then I took it to the wheels and polished it on there. And it's only polished up to 3000 grit because that's the finest wheel I have. And I'm not very good at polishing stuff on wheels. Um, it's a matter of not having quite the right equipment for those really high grits. Uh, but you can still see the pattern in here nicely and uh, I think this one turned out pretty good. All right, for the next rock, uh, we have uh, possibly gabbro with chalcedony. So again, I'm going to just cut this one in half and see what it looks like inside. And I'm not real good at identifying rocks. Um, I know a few rocks around here that I see locally, but um, I'm not going to offer much opinion on what most of these are, uh, maybe a couple. So we'll cut that one next. Alright, this one also went in a flat lap and then uh, went to get finished up on the wheels up to 3000 grit. And so, once again, not a super high polish, but it looks pretty good. Uh, the interesting thing is, like right there, there's something metallic in there. And get that closer without getting that glare on there. So, you see the right in there, and there's other spots, but that's the biggest spot. This one has it too. Uh, there's little metallic bits in there, so I don't know what that is. Uh, but it sure is interesting. I like that one a lot. Next up, I have a moss agate here. So again, I'm going to cut that one. Uh, probably polish that one in the tumbler. Put it in the lotto tumbler for a week and uh, polish up that face that I cut really nicely. Here's the moss agate. Uh, this went into the tumbler for a week, so the outside of it is shiny uh, as well, but not smooth. I didn't smooth this out. This only went in the vibratory tumbler. So, uh, and the inside looks like this. Uh, it undercut pretty badly in these areas here. Uh, undercutting is where one part of the rock wears away faster than the other. So there's something soft in there. Uh, probably those inclusions, the mossy parts. I uh, didn't expect that to happen with this one. The rest of it's really shiny though. So that's not a complete failure, but I was, I was pretty disappointed that it undercut as bad as it did. Next we have this one, which he doesn't know what this is, but he thought it looked interesting. So we're going to cut it in half right there and see what it looks like inside. So this went on the flat lap and then my other wheels up to 3000 grit. Uh, so this is the one that looked like this when we started. Interesting rock. Don't know what it is, but it's interesting. Next we have prenite. Uh, I have never seen a piece of prenite this big. Uh, I'm sure they exist, but uh, I can only find this up in Lake Superior and I only go up there a couple times a year. So this is a piece of prenite I found. 
Uh, mine tend to be much smaller. This is from Michigan in the UP, uh, up in the Keweenaw Peninsula, and this is from Minnesota. So it looks a little different than mine, but we're going to cut that one right in half and see what it looks like inside. Well, this pre-night ended up being uh, one of my favorite rocks of the bunch. Certainly the most interesting because there's little copper all throughout here. Uh, little tiny specks of it. And I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to try to move this so that... I don't know if that glare helps see it or not. It's hard to tell on the little camera screen. If it doesn't show up this way, I'll take a still photo of it and show it that way. But anyhow, uh, I, I'm not surprised to find copper like this in rocks that I find up in the Keweenaw Peninsula. Uh, but I, I didn't expect it from Minnesota rocks, so I guess Minnesota has copper also. Anyhow, cool rock. Okay, next up we have porphyry. So uh, I was tempted to throw this one in the tumbler, uh, but I'm not sure if it's going to tumble well. I'm looking at little parts back here and I see parts are kind of sunk in a little bit deeper than others. Uh, when you have a rock like that, a lot of times when you tumble it, it undercuts. So one mineral will wear away faster than another mineral and it ends up not looking very good. So I think I'm going to grind this on this machine and just maybe face polish one side and, and see what we can do that way. Right, this is a little porphyry rock, and I just polished the one face of it, and uh, looks like that. Okay, here we go with the next. Uh, he's not sure what this one is. Uh, he wants it cut in half, so I'll do that. We'll see what it looks like in the middle. Uh, if it looks good in the middle, I'll probably tumble it or polish it on the wheels or something. We'll see what happens with that. All right, this one I goofed up on. Uh, I put it in the tumbler, thought it should do fine in the tumbler, and it did not. Uh, it just ruined the rock in here. Um, the outside's all undercut like that. So parts of it got shiny. In there it's nice and shiny, but then this is just destroyed. So uh, sorry about that one, Taylor. Sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen when you throw one in the tumbler. Uh, most of the rocks I throw in the tumbler do fine. Uh, but every once in a while I get something like this. Granite does this in parts of it, uh, depending on the granite. Sometimes it's really bad like this, and sometimes it's just little bits here and there. So that one's just sort of ruined. Bummer. All right, next uh, we've got a couple of possible agates. And I am not super familiar with agates. I picked up a few things that I know are agates, and then some things that I wonder if they're agates, kind of like these. Uh, my opinion here, not that I know much, but I'm seeing these little pits in here. I would guess that's an agate. I certainly would have picked that up as an agate. So we're going to cut that in half and see what it looks like inside. And then this one um, also looks interesting to me. Not sure if it's an agate or not, but we're going to cut it in half and hopefully find some bands inside. This is the other possible agate, which is now definitely an agate. Uh, some fine banding in there. Uh, 
faint fine banding, I should say. So let's see if I can get it so you don't see all the reflections. So this spent uh, a full week in the tumbler, um, just the vibratory tumbler, so it's all rough on the outside but shiny. So this went through all the stages of the, the Lotto tumbler. Absolutely an agate. And here's this one. Uh, took a really nice shine in the tumbler. Uh, this only went in the Lotto tumbler, so I made no attempt to smooth out like these cracks and stuff in it. Uh, I just was worried about these inside faces, so um, nice, nice shiny rock. Uh, not an agate, I don't think, but, but it's pretty rock. Next we have a couple of rocks that Taylor thinks are agates. Uh, and you're not really seeing any banding here, but they sure do look like agates, especially this one. So I'm going to grind away on one of the faces. I'm not sure which face yet, but I'll, uh, I'll play around with it and grind it. Then I'm going to throw it in the Lotto tumbler for a week and really shine it up. So one face will be completely shined and the outside will be somewhat shined also. Uh, and uh, same thing with this one. I'm going to grind away one side and then throw it in the tumbler. Right, these are the two agates uh, that I did on the wheels completely. Uh, and then when I got done with them on the wheels where they were already pretty shiny, uh, these shine up really nice because they're such a hard rock. Uh, I threw them in the tumbler after that and they only went in the polish stage. They were in aluminum oxide polish for two days, none of the other stages. So the outside got a little bit shiny and this inside surface got really nice. And you're going to see reflections of all parts of my shop here and probably nothing else. I don't know how to fix that. Can I shade it? No, nope, that doesn't work. Anyhow, definitely an agate. There's some banding in there. It's hard to see. Um, it's very, very faint, uh, but certainly banding in there. And then this one also has banding. You probably see it up in here a little bit. That was also in the lotto for the two days in polish. And mostly you're seeing my shop lights and stuff. Cool rocks. Well, by the time you see this video, these rocks will be back in Taylor's hands, and I'll let Taylor tell you what he's going to do with them. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Taylor. If you want a chance to win some of these goodies that Rob has cut and polished, I'm going to be doing an unboxing video, and at the end, I'll be doing a giveaway so I can rehome some of these pieces. Thanks. Bye. All right. 
right, so I'll have a link in the description to Taylor's video, and I'll also put a link up here, maybe, or maybe over here. I don't know, just click around the top of the video somewhere and you might find the link. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.